friends, so good to see you. This is week 12 of our art class. Has anyone seen a picture like this before? Or a sculpture? What do you notice? This is what's called an alebrije. An alebrije is a very colorful animal that is found in a lot of different images in Mexican folk art. An artist who became very famous for creating alebrijes was Pedro Linares. You may have seen animals like this in the movie Coco. What do you notice about all of these pictures? I notice that there's a lot of very bright colors and designs, almost like the Zentangles we did last week. This week, we are going to use our art knowledge that we've been learning so far to create some very cool alebrijes. For our art skills this week, we are not only practicing our warm and cool colors again so that we can get really good at them, but we're also talking about something called emphasis. What does it mean to emphasize something? emphasize something is to make it really intense or stand out. So if I'm talking and I emphasize the word emphasis, that means I'm saying it louder. I'm making it stand out so you hear it. In art, emphasis is to make something stand out. So if I was coloring my alebrije and I just did rainbow colors all over my entire page, do you think that you'd be able to see it very well? No, because it would be the same color as what's around it and it would be camouflaged. We are going to create emphasis by using either warm or cool colors to separate the outside part of our picture and our alebrije, so our alebrije really stands out. Remember, if you don't have any colors at home, you can always use Seesaw to draw your artwork. You can either draw your picture with whatever writing tool you have and then take a picture and color it on Seesaw or you can draw the entire thing on Seesaw. It's up to you. I know we have very limited time and I know everyone probably wants to do a different animal, but because our art class is so short, I'm just going to show you how to draw a couple of different animals. Then you can either pick one of the ones we do or draw one of your own. We are going to start by drawing a cat. So I'm going to start my cat by doing a little triangle that's pointed down like an arrow. Once you do your triangle, you're going to do a letter J and a backward J. Next, I'm going to do an upside down and backward J, and then another upside down J. These two at the top are where our eyes are gonna go. So now, I'm going to do a little letter U on each side to finish off the shape of the eyes. Now that I have that eye shape, I'm going to do a little V inside each one and color it in. Well, now that I have my cat pupils, I'm gonna do a C and a backward C, kind of like what we did with our eyes a few weeks back, so that we have our cat's pup um, irises. Now, I'm going to do a little curved line like a hill up above everything else. Once you draw your curved tail, I'm going to do two upside down V's for our ears. Now we're going to do a curved line around that goes down. Now I'll curve that line down and out. And then I'll curve it all over the place so I can get the tail. Remember, if this is going too fast, you can always pause it and go back. Now, I ran out of room, so I'm actually going to have to unfold my paper and finish down here. 
So now I'm going to go down. I'm going to make my first foot. So I'll go ahead, do a little letter D. And then I'll go back up and do kind of a zigzag. Now I want to create my cat's chest. So I'm going to do a little curved line down. I'll do a straight line. Another letter B. And then I'll do a line that kind of points a little bit where the cat's elbow is. Now I need to do my cat's belly. So I'll go on the other side of this foot. Do a little curved line up. And then I'm going to do a letter C. After I draw that letter C, I'm going to go over here where the tail is. And I'm going to do a letter, a sideways L, or it looks like a backward L. Now I'm going to touch my C, go down, and connect it to that backward L. And I'm going to do the same little shape. I'm basically going to trace that same shape back here. Now I have my cat. At this point, you guys can add whatever details you want. You can add some whiskers. And then think about all of the Zen tangles we did last week. Think about different lines and shapes you can use to decorate your cat. Remember, for this part, you can draw whatever type of animal you want, as long as you're completely filling it with different types of lines and designs. If you already drew the cat and you want to move on, you can skip over this next section and go to the coloring part. If you want to draw a dog instead, you can draw a dog really quick with me. Here is the dog. So I'm going to start somewhere on this side of my page and I'm going to do one line, little line. Then I'm going to curve it down, almost like I'm making a triangle, but there's curves instead of points and it's pointing down. Now that I have that shape, I'm going to do a little letter J, almost like with the cat, but it's going to be sideways. Almost like a smiley face. And I'm going to find my outside edge of my triangle or nose. And I'm going to do another little curved line that meets that smiley face. Now that I have my dog's mouth, I want to do a chin. So I'm going to go down below this one right here. Put my writing tool there. And then do another line that goes to the side and then curves down. Now I need to go to my last corner of my triangle that I haven't done anything from yet. And I'm going to draw a straight line just kind of back and up a little bit, almost like a diagonal line a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing from the other one on the top. Now I'm going to draw a little rainbow shape for the top of the eye. And then a smiley face shape for the bottom of the eye, just like we did last week. And I'll go ahead and do a little bump for the dog's forehead right here. Now I need to finish the inside of my eye. So I'll, just like when we did our self-portraits, I'm going to do a C and a backward C. And then we can do a little chunky C on the inside. Alrighty. So now... I want to do my dog's ears. Since we did a pointy ears for the cat, I'm going to do floppy ears for the dog. So I'm going to do a little candy cane shape. And then I'm going to do a little hill on top. And another little hill. And then we're going to connect them with a big J. And then I can do the, other dog, the dog's other ear on the other side with a couple little rainbow shapes. 
So it looks like the other ears on the other side. And it looks a little funny with it sticking up, so I'm just going to add a little shadow. If you want to add a shadow, you can. You don't have to. All right. So now I'm going to finish my dog. So I'm going to do a curved line down. It looks like I'm running out of room. So I'm going to go ahead and do this little line down. And once I do that, I'm going to unfold my page. And so I'm going to curve it down so it looks like my dog is sitting. And then I'm going to have the tail come out like this because I did, ran out of room to have the tail up. All right. So now for the legs. I'm going to start by drawing one line down. And then I'm going to do the front of a letter D. But instead of connecting this, I'm going to go back and go back up. Now I'm ready for my next foot. So in front, we want to do the foot that's on the other side of the dog. So I'm going to go a little higher on the chest, go down, and I'm just going to do that same B shape and just connect it to the other one. For the dog's chest, I'm going to go back a little bit, do a big letter C. That's going to be the dog's hip. We're going to do a little letter sideways, letter L. And then we're going to connect it to that C with a hill. And I'm just going to do the same shape on the other side. So a little curve and a bump and then connect it. All right. So my back legs are a little small. That's all right. It happens. So at this point, just like with the cat, we're going to go in and add some details, kind of like our Zen tangles. You can do different types of lines, decorate it however you want. We're going to make our alebrijes really colorful and detailed. So you want it to look like you put a lot of work in. Make sure you're not scribbling, but just adding some really cool colors. I mean, details. We haven't added our colors yet, have we? <laughs> but we want it to look super interesting. So go ahead and do a bunch of different types of lines. I'm going to color in my nose. Once you draw your animal, you can come up with something to go around the outside edges of the animal. This part is up to you. I'm just going to do another Zen Tangle like we did last week because it's relaxing and I think that this week is just super crazy, so I want to take my time. But if you want to draw something different in this part, you can. Because we're practicing warm and cool colors, and since some people did not get art class last week because of the election, we are going to do some practice with our warm and cool colors. If you remember the difference between warm and cool colors, you can skip this little recap and you can go straight to the coloring part. If you don't really remember or you think you need a reminder, we're going to watch a quick clip from last week so you can remember what warm and cool colors are. When I say warm colors, what do you think of? When I think of warm, I think of a fire where I can roast some marshmallows. So when you think of warm colors, I want you guys to think of fire colors like red, orange, and yellow. In art, those are called warm colors. And another trick is anytime you see a color that you think has a lot of red or orange or yellow in it, that's probably a warm color. What about cool colors? What do you think of? I think of ice or water or maybe when you touch grass and it feels really cold. So green grass, blue, water, and also purple because purple has a lot of blue in it. And so if it's a purple that looks like it has a lot of blue in it, then that's a cool purple. Remember, we want to add emphasis so that our animal stands out no matter what colors we use. So I want you to choose either warm or cool colors for your animal. And then after you color your animal with either warm or cool colors, I want you to use the opposite around it. 
So if you use warm colors for your dog, then use cool colors around it. Or if you use cool colors for your dog, use warm colors around it. Now that I used my cool colors for my dog, I'm going to use the warm colors around it so that it stands out and I have emphasis. Here's your objectives. Number one, I can draw an alebrije and completely fill it with different patterns, lines, and shapes. Number two, I can pick either warm or cool colors to color my alebrije and then use the opposite around my alebrije to create emphasis or make it stand out. In español. Yo puedo dibujar un alebrije llenarlo con líneas, figuras y patrones diferentes. Número 2. Yo puedo elegir colores caídos o frescos para colorear mi alebrije y usar los opuestos para colorear la parte de afuera creando énfasis. <música> 